Hi, this is Lisa from Eclipse Airbrush Tanning and today I'm going to show you uh, the proper way to exfoliate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, the different tools that you need. Then we're going to do a short demonstration and then I'm going to kind of tell you what some of the trouble spots are and how to do it systematically. Okay, so first thing you're going to need to exfoliate um, the best way that I know how is um, a nylon scrubby glove. They look like this. Um, you can get them anywhere. You can get them at the salon. I believe they're $3. Um, you can also get them at any Walmart, Walgreens, uh, Rite Aid, anywhere that sells Bath and Body products is going to have these gloves. The other thing that you are going to need is some sort of scrub. Now this is um, our Cocoa Coffee Scrub. Um, this is my personal bottle of it that I use all the time. Um, any scrub is going to do. You're going to want something that um, is rough enough to where it's going to um, be able to exfoliate your skin proper, properly, but not so rough that it is painful. Um, I tend to like um, scrubs that come in these little tubs better. A lot of times they're called body polishes. Um, than ones that are like suspended in gel or suspended in a body wash. I just feel like those type don't have enough exfoliant to where they're going to be able to do the job properly. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of scrub on our wet glove. Um, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to start massaging that into the skin. And we're going to use, it doesn't really matter circles, up and down, whatever is comfortable for you. The most important thing is just that you want to scrub lightly. Um, you can pink in the skin. You definitely want this to be stimulating, but you do not want to scrub hard and you do not want to cause your skin to be red, become red or irritated. Um, and so we are basically going to do this um, all over our entire body using the glove. So one of the tricks that I like to do is these gloves usually come in pairs and I'll take one and I'll use it to exfoliate and then I'll keep the other one as a spare. Uh, that way when I'm done with this one, once it's gotten all that dead skin off your entire body, it's pretty dirty. So I like to throw it into the wash. Um, you definitely don't want bacteria building up in those things. Um, so that's just a little trick that I do. Um, in order to make this process simpler, easier, that sort of thing. So the other thing about exfoliating is that you need to get everywhere. If you don't get everywhere, then you have completely missed the boat on the purpose for this. The purpose for exfoliating is we want to get the skin on your body, all over your body, all down to the same base level of skin. And if we miss places, then those places, um, there's going to be more layers of skin when you go to get your tan. So the tan's going to be darker there, or it's not going to last as long, or it's going to be uneven, or sometimes it can even cause it to come off um, faster or slower. I mean, the type of skin really makes a difference, but um, the best way to get the truest color, the longest lasting tan, the most even um, fading is to exfoliate proper, properly and in order to do that we have to be very systematic about it. So what I do, like to do is I like to start at one foot and then work my way up the entire body and then start at the other foot. Well actually I change hands with the glove because I'm only using one glove. Then I start with the other foot and I work my way all the way up the other side of the body. And you want to skip your face. You never want to use anything on your face that isn't made for your face. Your skin is just too delicate there. So no glove, no scrub for your face. You need to buy something specifically for that, such as a Clarisonic or a scrub made for your face. Um, I really do love the Clarisonic. If you haven't tried it, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, so you just got to take that systematic approach, much like brushing your teeth. You want to be thorough. You want to be gentle. You want to get everywhere. So um, there are definitely some trouble spots in doing that, and I'm going to go over them really quickly. Um, not all of these are going to be trouble spots for you personally, 
but um, you'll once you get a couple tans, you'll know what your trouble spots are. But they'll probably definitely be included in this list. So um, these are places where you want to make sure you get, and you want to make sure you get thoroughly. Um, so you want to get the tops of your feet and in between your toes. You want to get your ankle and the back of your heel. You want to make sure you get the top of your knee and the inside of your knee. You want to make sure you get your elbow and the inside of your elbow. Uh, you want to make sure you get the top of your hand and in between all your fingers. Uh, you want to make sure you get your wrist. You want to make sure you get um, uh, underneath and in between your breasts, especially, especially if you are a big breasted woman. Um, also, if you are a big breasted woman, you want to make sure you get here where your bra, bra can tend to rub. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned about getting their back. Um, your back is generally not a trouble spot, so you want to definitely get what you can reach, but um, I wouldn't worry about it other than that. Um, some other trouble spots, your armpit and this, and this like grouping of skin right at the front of your armpit, uh, you want to make sure you get that. Uh, you definitely want to get your neck. Anywhere where there's a crease, there can be a problem. So if you're very curvy, get, make sure you get in every single crease. Um, your neck is a little bit more sensitive, so you want to go a little bit lighter there most likely. Um, and if you just do that, do a real systematic process, uh, when you finish this process, you will have amazingly soft skin and you will get the most amazing airbrush tan possible. Um, it really does make a difference, especially if you are over 30 and the older you get, uh, definitely the bigger difference it makes. Um, your skin just starts to dry out at a certain point and it needs a little help. And that's what exfoliating does. Um, it should only take you about 10 minutes, so it's really not a, a hassle or a time sacrifice. Um, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, and this is very, very important, is you want to shave or wax before you do this process. Um, hair removal, if you read our pre-tanning uh, prep, hair removal is the first step. So you want to get that done prior to um, exfoliating. And one other last tip, um, you can use a scrub that's oil-based. Um, a lot of the salt and sugar scrubs have a lot of oil in them and that oil is actually really good for conditioning your skin. If you weren't getting an airbrush tan, I would say uh, more power to you with moisturizing along with exfoliating. But if you are getting an airbrush tan, some of those uh, more heavy duty moisturizers can get in the way of things. So if you're getting airbrush tan within six hours of doing this process, you wanna rinse off. You wanna take either a body scrub, a regular soap, some shampoo, anything that's non-moisturizing and rinse your body down just so that you can get off any of that excess oil so that it won't interfere with the tan. Um, and the other thing is like as far as a timeline before airbrush tanning that you want to exfoliate, uh, it would be sometime in the 24 hours before you get your tan. So you have a, quite a bit of leeway there on when you can be doing this, just whatever fits best in your schedule. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and thank you so much and everybody stay tan.